Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so my disclosures. And so my talk really is going to be about multiple myeloma because there's so much new stuff going on and I was limited to 20 slides. So in the end, we can um, talk to um, Dr. Yeager about any lymphoma uh, new therapies that are coming out that are really exciting. Um, but I think that you know we have so many options and really the question is going to be about sequencing and combination now even with more therapies that are coming out. Um, you know, our patients are regularly getting um, six, seven lines of therapy. I have patients that are on 20 lines of therapy. You know, I've had patients that were post-BCMA. We didn't have telketamab yet. We didn't have clinical trials yet. We got them through somehow, and then all of a sudden they got telketamab, and now, you know, a year later still alive when we were talking about hospice. And so that really is myeloma and relapse refractory. And so these new therapies that are about to come out, we're really excited about because as our patients are relapsing on, our GPRC5D and our um, BCMA therapies, we need new options. So one of the, the really exciting um, class, I think, is the cell mod. So this is just you know molecularly evolution of IMIDs, um, but it does actually have a different um, binding um, for Cerebron and Icarus and Iolos, and then targeted protein decoration. Um, there's increased tumor anti-proliferation, uh, apoptosis. Um, and the synergistic combinations from IMIDs, um, you know, on the left to ibertamide to mesigdamide, um, we see, you know, improved T cell and NK cell um, activation and, and other things that I think are going to be really exciting um, to, to combine with some of our bispecifics and CAR Ts. Um, so just a little bit about that. Um, again, ibertamide, the first clinical trial. Dr. Loniel is the first author of this paper, so he can tell you much more. But overall response rate with Iber by itself um, indexed. 32% for all patients with dose escalation. Um, and then in terms of patients with dose expansion, 26% overall response rate. Um, the duration of response, you know, for patients that responded was seven months um, and progression-free survival of three months. So again, we know single agent um, is not great for relapse refractory patients, but this was safe. The neutropenia was the biggest issue, um, infections in terms of grade three, four, um, but everything else for, for the most part, patients were able to tolerate. <laughs> So then mesigdamide, which I'm really excited about, um, is the um, cell mod that I think is going to have a lot more ability to co um, for a combination. Um, again, you can see in this first plot at the top left, um, this was the first in human clinical study of mezi plus dex. Um, the biggest grade 3, 4, grade 4 actually in that navy blue um, was neutropenia, so 80.5%. Um, and then uh, for both de dose escalation and expo um, ex uh, expansion, and then infections followed that, um, but again, the dark blue, grade four, was a lot lower. Um, and then when you look at the response rates on the, the right, um, in terms of the expansion cohort, the overall response rate, 40%, um, and those with plasma cytomas, 30%, and those with prior anti-BCMA therapy, which um, we just talked about, um, again, overall response rate, 50% for these patients. And again, most of these patients had to be refractory to PI, IMID, and um, a CD38. Um, and then looking at combination studies, because again, that's what we do. Um, these were a little bit earlier line patients um, with uh, bortezomib dex versus carfilzomib dex. Again, um, the neutropenia was a little bit less. There wasn't as much grade three, four. Um, and then infections also pretty similar, but still less lower grade, because um, again, I think this was earlier line patients. Um, but response rates now, when you combine it in a little earlier line uh, group of patients, 80 to 90%, you know, between 70 and 80% from the majority of um, for VD and KD combinations. And those are studies that are ongoing now with multiple cohorts um, studies. So hopefully we'll have more data soon and hopefully FDA approval. Um, so the other exciting thing is different targets. So um, now we have another target, FCRH5. Um, and again, this is expressed on myeloma cells, almost 100% prevalence, um, also on normal B cells, but just like our other targets, much more um, antigen density on myeloma cells and plasma cells. Um, and this is a humanized IgG-based uh, FCRH5 CD3 bispecific antibody. And there have been a few studies, but this is the first one with the step-up dosing given at week one. Then it's an IV dose, but every three weeks. And this is one of our first studies in the relapse refractory that was fixed dosing of 17 cycles, um, so very patient-friendly. Um, and then, again, CRS, ICANs were both low-grade and ICANs uncommon. Um, infections was about 25% grade 3, 4. Um, this is 
a little bit lower than what we see with our BCMA bispecifics, which are closer to 40%. Um, again, is this target-based or just fixed duration um, or something different? You know, we'll have to see the, the follow-up for other studies. Um, but it was uncommon to discontinue. And again, response rates were um, older and younger patients, 65, um, younger or older, still 58 and 55%. So then the really exciting stuff that's coming out um, in the last year has been our GPRC5D CAR-T studies. Um, and again, talketamab is a great drug and, and you know, great response rates and PFS, um, but it does have major side effects that we have to learn how to um, you know, treat our patients. So um, skin issues, nail um, you know, um, uh, problems, um, we can figure that out, um, you know, whole therapy, and sometimes it gets better, um, but the weight loss, so taste uh, changes, dyskesia, weight loss, um, sometimes those are not reversible, even when you hold, it takes months before it's reversible. Um, so I think in the CAR-T world, which is something we've seen is a little bit different and why I'm excited about these studies. So um, here is the um, CC95266 GPRC5D CAR-T study. Um, and again, response rate, this was a dose escalation study, of course, and you can see that the response rate improves with the number of cells. So at 150 million cells, it was a 94% resp overall response rate. And at 450, it was 100% response rate. The dip that you see at that 63% with 300 um, really was there are more patients with extramedullary disease, as Dr. Lowenial talked about. These are patients that don't do it well um, for long. So 59% of these patients had EMD. Um, and their soluble BCMA was much higher compared to the other cohorts, which usually goes along with higher tumor burden. Um, and then again, had the lowest progression, uh, free, median time to progression was 4.8 months. Um, but I, because of the side effects, um, that you see here. So again, compared to our bispecifics, we tend, tend to see less of the GPRC5D on target, um, uh, off, off tumor on target uh, toxicity. Um, but there are some um, neurotoxicities that are a little different that we were um, um, that we learned about during um, the the study. So one of them is you know we have ICANS type neurotoxicity. We don't see um, very much of that, but two patients did have greater than grade three. But it's the ataxia and the gait disturbance um, that was a little bit higher in that 450 million cell dose, and therefore um, at the 150 million cell dose they didn't see that. And so again, because the response rate was really high. The phase two study, which I'll show you, goes with the 150 million uh, dose. There is another GPRC5D CAR-T um, as well that was presented um, at ASCO. So this was um, a, their paper earlier last year, but the Polaris study, which was the first in human, um, this is a bi-epitope nanobody-based GPRC5D CAR-T. Um, and again, this was nine patients here and had 100% response rate. And you can see the stringent CR was 60%, VGPR 40%. At ASCO, they had 10 patients that they presented on. Um, now it was 700 days plus um, in terms of um, median follow-up. And so it's 80% stringent CR, 20% um, VGPR rate. So over time, they're seeing the increase in stringent CR rates. Um, and again, best time to response with 3.1 months. Um, complete response or better took 4.1 months. And then the median PFS was not reached, but the nine-month estimated PFS was 87.5%. Uh, percent. They do have a median PFS now around 10 months um, higher for the highest dose level of 6 million cells. So this is 1, 3, or 6 million. And so they're going to open a study in the U.S., which I'll show you in a second. Um, okay, so these are the key ongoing pivotal studies that hopefully, um, with results, we'll have even more therapies for our uh, relapse refractory patients. So the quintessential study is the um, uh, um, the phase two study for one of our um, GPRC 5D directed CAR T cell therapies. Um, so again, I told you this is relapse refractory myeloma patient. Now you have to be quadruple class um, exposed. So PI, IMID, um, CD38, and a BCMA therapy. Um, it can be bispecific, a CAR T or an ADC. Um, had to have PD, and then ECOG less than one or less. Um, and again, these patients, um, the, the dose for this is 150 times 10 to the six CAR T cells. And again, patients get a free bridging, LDC, and then infusion. And really looking at overall response rate in that fourth line plus. Um, but now that we have therapies approved in earlier line and clinical trials where patients have had BCMA earlier, their secondary endpoints will look at um, you know, overall response rate and CR rate, but also in the third line versus fourth line um, patients, as well as MRD negativity, um, and then, of course, cellular kinetics and PROs as well. 
And then what I'm excited about with this product and, and others is the combination studies. So there's quite a few, but these are the, the ones that we have the most data on or have started at least. Um, so one of the studies was presented today in early line patients, um, but this is a phase 1B2 study of GCO12F, which is actually a dual targeted um, CD19 BCMA um, in subjects with relapsed refractory myeloma. So that study is opening in the US and hopefully we'll see that same amazing response rate of 100% and um, in, in no real CRS. Um, but really excited to see the dual targeting. Um, the other one is the safety and efficacy of both anti-BCMA and GPRC5D CAR T cell therapy together in relapsed refractory. So can we use the same mechanism of action but two different CAR Ts with different antigens? Um, and then the last one is a phase one multicenter open label study looking at relapsed refractory myeloma and using the GPRC5D um, CAR T but um, with either mesigdomide that we just talked about or iberdamide um, as a maintenance uh, to see if we can increase you know, expansion and proliferation and hopefully persistence of these cells um, and see if that improves outcomes without increasing toxicity. Um, and then I think we, you know, this is just um, really exciting that these studies have started, but these are BCMA CAR T studies, but now you know, we have approval in second line for cell to cell. And there's two studies, CAR 5 and CAR 6, trying to get approval in first line. So CAR 5 is the randomized phase three and newly diagnosed for patients who are not intended for transplant or are not eligible for transplant. So the way they're um, stratifying is by ISS stage, but then age as well as transplant eligibility. So if you're greater than 70 years old, versus age less than 70, transplant ineligible, or age less than 70, but transplant deferred. Um, and then response to uh, also VRD, which is the initial therapy they're using here. So it's a VRD five to six cycles, followed by randomization, and then either you continue with VRD and RD maintenance, or you go to VRD as bridging, and then silt to cell, and then observation, um, and then follow until PD and the primary endpoint of PFS. So again, excited to see this, especially with the um, stratification that they have. And then CARTITUDE 6 is in patients who are transplant eligible, um, who are intending to go to transplant. And again, um, randomized study for um, about 750 patients, and patients will get DVRD for either four cycles, followed by transplant, followed by DVRD two cycles, LEN for two years, um, and then stop versus DVRD six cycles, cell to cell, LEN for two years, and then stop and then follow until PD. And again, PFS and MRD um, uh, negative CRs is actually the, the dual primary endpoints here. And then CARMA 9 is a little bit different. It's also newly diagnosed patients, um, and it's looking at um, about 618 patients, and this is actually using transplant plus consolidation with CAR-T. Um, so rather than instead of. And so patients, again, will get four to six cycles of induction therapy. Um, and if they've had an inadequate response after transplant, a PR or a VGPR, um, then they can be eligible for the study to get um, IDA cells, single infusion um, of 460 million CAR T cells um, after LD chemo. And then they'll get LEN maintenance um, one month after until or until their counts recover, continuous until PD. And then again, the uh, PFS um, is the um, main um, endpoint here. Okay. Um, and so then coming back to one of the other GPRC 5D CAR T studies that we, we just talked about, um, again, it, this is going to be a phase one, two. This was uh, primarily done in China before, and now it's coming to the US. Um, and again, you know, the response rates of 100%, so we're excited, but um, this is going to be a dose escalation of that one, three, and six million cells. Um, in a three plus three design, followed by dose expansion, um, and then a phase two with 48 subjects. And again, these are patients that in the dose escalation don't necessarily have to have BCMA therapy um, prior, but um, the dose expansion phase two um, will, will have um, prior BCMA exposure as well. So again, exciting that we're gonna have all these options for patients who have already had prior BCMA. And then, you know, I, I, my conflict, um, I always say, is that I'm actually a huge CAR-T enthusiast, and I think all patients to get, should get CAR-T therapy um, definitely first, but, you know, should get it if, if you only had one option. Um, that, P, you know, that PFS where they have no therapy is so big um, for patients who are, you know, on continuous therapy for, for the rest of their lives um, when it's not a curative disease. I think it's such a... Um, 
um, shame if patients can't get that gift. Um, but there's a lot of patients we can't either make cells for, they can't come to us, they, they can't move you know, for 30 days to a, a CAR T center. So until we can take this out to, those, you know, to the patients, um, I think off the shelf is really, really important. And again, combinations you know, um, of therapies are, are we, we have the redirect study with um, BCMA and GPRC5D uh, tech and tell that had amazing response rates and great responses in EMD, and we have a study in EMD patients alone. Um, but giving two by specifics is that many more shots and you know, making sure that the PKs, et cetera, all work out. So um, there's a, a novel uh, BCMA GPRC 5D CD3 tri specific um, that's also coming into studies now, and it's a phase one. Um, again, GPRC5D and BCMA. So therefore, you know your plasma cells can have, or myeloma cells can have one, both, or um, um, one or the other, or both. And hopefully, these um, um, T cells will be engaged and work better. But again, I think really exciting to have an off-the-shelf combination study with just one drug. Um, so hopefully, more to come on that. And then at EHA, I'm not going to go into all of these, um, but just to show you sort of what was presented um, just in the last few hours um, and last few days, um, the plenary, we had the phase three IMRAS study with the isotuximab VRD versus VRD, so adding that CD38, you know, not reached median PFS versus 54.3 months. At the late breaking oral, we had the phase three DREAM um, study that Dr. Loniel um, referenced as well. Bella, um, um, our uh, BCMA ADC, um, with palm dex versus uh, palm bortezomib dex. Again, median PFS not reached versus 12.7 months with a hazard ratio of 0.52. And then these were all the oral abstracts that were presented. That first line is all of the novel BCMA CAR Ts that are still um, coming through. So we have um, anidocaptogene autolucil. That's actually, this was the phase one study that was being presented, but we have a pivotal phase two study that hopefully will complete soon and, and potentially get a third FDA approved CAR T in there. Um, then the second line is, again, updates on Sevastamab, um, and then um, FASTCAR as first-line therapy in China. Um, there's Siltacel um, with LUN maintenance and newly diagnosed that was um, presented. And then again, Idacel, and then Linvo and um, um, the ABBV383 um, BCMA bispecifics that were updated as well. So it was a great uh, EHA for um, all this new data. So with that, I think new targets for both bispecifics and CAR-Ts offer potential better options post-BCMA therapy, but we don't know if um, that's the right sequence. I think it is, but potentially for some patients, maybe a different target is better um, versus, you know, how do we sequence versus combine these to maybe get our tail um, that we don't have in myeloma yet. Um, but the biggest thing is supportive care and preventative measures. Um, yes, a lot of our patients are older, um, you know, usually 65 or older um, for median age at diagnosis. So infections, DVTs, GI, other toxicities um, have to be optimized. So it, it is um, these therapies, I call them high maintenance because we have a lot of other, op other things that we have to look out for to make sure our patients do well. Um, and then I think Sagar did a great job. Mechanisms of resistance, you know, for these new wave therapies need to be further evaluated. And if we did have biomarkers, um, that really could help make our um, decisions a little bit easier in clinic in terms of that sequencing versus combination. So with that, we will go to our last two questions. Okay, so the first in human trial of mazigdamide plus dexamethasone in patients with relapsed refractory myeloma, which of the following was the most common adverse event? A, um, ICANS. B, neutropenia, C, cytokine release syndrome, D, dyskesia or taste disorder. Perfect, okay, so 50-50, okay, so it's we got more people onto the neutropenia. So it's neutropenia. Um, dyskesia is the GPRC5D um, therapies, okay? And then last question, in the phase one trial of CC95266, um, which is the GPRC5D CAR-T, in patients with relapsed refractory myeloma, which dose number of CAR-T cells had the highest overall response at 100%? 25, 75, 150, or 450? Awesome. Yep, 450. Perfect. Um, but the toxicity was higher, so they went with the 150. But thank you. With that, I will sit down and 
there's any other questions yeah. left. Thank you very, very much. Uh,